Today we're going to be talking about something with Nintendo Switch 2 that isn't getting a lot of pub right now, right? A lot of people are waiting on the next batch of rumors, a fresh batch of leaks, maybe something from the manufacturing side, or just Nintendo to announce this damn thing, or maybe Furukawa to get in front of another interview and start to deny, 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 right? We're just kind of sitting on our hands at this point. And what's fascinating is a number of things have happened over the last couple of weeks that really indicate a lot of things with Switch 2, in particular that it is coming in 2024, and we might even know when it's going to be announced. That's right, these hints are out there, and they're not getting talked about enough. But, you know... I want to make sure I give proper credit to this first point we're about to bring up because my dear friend Andres Restart over on his channel uh, made a whole video about this, I don't know, five, six, seven days ago, and he was dealing with one specific aspect, and that is DLC. Uh, it is very true. We have no DLC right now for any of Nintendo's major games heading into 2024. At all. Nada. Nothing. See, last year we knew about, you know, there was going to be Splatoon 3 DLC. We knew that there would eventually be Pokemon DLC. And yes, they even announced the Fire Emblem Engage DLC last year at the Game Awards. So we knew about that as well. But if you think about everything after Fire Emblem Engage, you think about the major releases, which are really three big games, right? We have Tears of the Kingdom, Pikmin 4, and Mario Wonder. None of those games have DLC announced right now as we're heading into 2024. Now, they could announce DLC, of course, at any point, although the Zelda team has come out to say there will not be DLC. Most of us at least want a Master Mode free update, but we might not be getting that either. So it's fascinating to think that there is no major DLC. Now, we had thought the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC might leak into 2024 because, you know, the second part of it was supposed to drop in winter of 2023. And winter doesn't really begin until like halfway through December and goes into actually mostly in 2024. But then they went ahead and announced that release date. And yeah, it's coming out in December. So uh, we have no major DLC for any game heading into next year. And technically next year, there's only one brand new game even announced right now in Princess Peach Showtime. So I find this fascinating. Now, it doesn't mean there's not other releases. We know about a bunch of remakes, remasters, and stuff popping off next year. A lot of you guys really excited about the Thousand Year Door one, which doesn't have a date yet. Uh, but yeah, guys, like there, there is just this significant lack of not only a major game to look forward to that's actually brand new, uh, we also don't have any major DLC to look forward to as well. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC just wrapped up. Pokemon DLC is about to wrap up. And there's nothing. And Nintendo has this long history every year of most of their major games having some sort of major free update or major paid DLC. And again, if you want the full history on that, I highly suggest you go watch Andres Restart's video because he goes down year by year from 2017 all the way up through 2023 on all the games that got major DLC and or free updates to sort of prove that this is a very strange trend heading into 2024 that we don't have any major DLC for the major games released this year. Again, Beyond Fire Emblem Engage, whose DLC was actually announced a year ago, well, a little bit more than a year ago, in December of 2022. So, it is fascinating to think about how this could actually be a major hint for Nintendo Switch 2 coming next year. There's not a major game to look forward to at the moment beyond Princess Peach Showtime, which is a Mario spinoff game, so not considered a major IP in that of itself. So, we don't have a major game to look forward to beyond remakes and remasters. And we don't have any major DLC. Why? Why are they not giving us anything? Why are they not teasing? I mean, they could have even dropped a teaser for Metroid Prime 4, right? They've already announced that game. But no, there's nothing. We have technically nothing major to look forward to heading into 2024. It's seemingly every year around this time of year, we make a video titled like, oh, how next year could be the greatest year in Nintendo Switch history. And we can usually cite a bunch of games and stuff that's coming. And this time we can't because... They're not really giving us anything to be super excited about. Again, beyond remakes and remasters and, well, you guys know, Princess Peach Showtime. Before I get to the next part of this video, I just want to say, hey, we are trying to get to a big subscriber goal around here. So I'd appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel, drop a like and all of that. Maybe we'll rain some free Oreo cookies down on your head. Like, look at these. Look at these cookies. Don't they look delicious? 
that could be all yours if you subscribe. So one defense people use for saying that, oh, there will not be any Nintendo Switch 2 in 2024 are the words of Furukawa. And I understand what Furukawa said and his words actually to me mean we are getting something in 2024. He said this stuff in a Q&A session and he talked about it in an interview he did as well with the Japanese newspaper. But he essentially said two things. One is that these reports that are being treated like truth about them talking about a system uh, being shown and or talked about to developers or select developers in 2022, he's saying that these are not factual. Now, in regards to the, you know, the whole 2022 thing, he's referencing the Activision Blizzard King stuff. There's a whole email chain. We talked about how Furukawa lied when we brought this up before, and he technically didn't lie because of the way he worded things, but what he did do was make some inferences uh, to sort of just deny the reports anyways. And look, we have some fact-based evidence and Nintendo requested redactions in emails about the platform from Activision Blizzard King, where they talked about a meeting that Bobby Kotick and other management have with Nintendo. And there was a summary of that meeting and the entire meeting was redacted. And yes, those redactions were requested by Nintendo's legal department. So why would Nintendo request redactions for a meeting that never happened? Obviously this meeting in 2022 did happen and yes, the device was talked about, but that's besides the point. What he said really probably wasn't about those statements because again, that stuff in the emails was all redacted. We don't even know what was said. But Bobby Kotick did say publicly on the stand that he is of belief that the next generation Switch, the NG Switch, would be roughly the power of a PlayStation 4. And that is likely what Furukawa's comments were directly about. An actual public made statement that people ran with as absolute truth and him saying that no, that's not exactly true. And that's fine. It probably isn't exactly the power of a PlayStation 4 and that probably isn't the right way to summarize how powerful the next generation Nintendo Switch is. It, it, it's probably just, you know, I don't want to say misinformation, but just not the incomplete picture. So denying that, I think, just makes sense because you're trying to, you know, not have people really know what exactly this platform is. And so you got to find a way to deny certain parts of the rumors that are floating out there. Now, notably, he never addressed the rumors, by the way, of, it going into manufacturing in November. Notice that that's been a report that's been out there this whole time. Never denied those reports. He also, by the way, did not deny that dev kits were sent out in the middle of July. Again, none of those reports were denied either. The one report that he throws a little wrench in is actually about the Gamescom stuff with, you know, where we have those demos. This is actually the biggest piece of news to hit at the end of summer, starting with Eurogamer and Video Game Chronicle and IGN and all the major outlets sort of corroborating with their own sources that this happened at Gamescom, that Nintendo showed off those two demos. The interesting thing about it is the way he denies it is not him saying those demos were never shown. He says specifically Switch 2 hardware was never shown to developers at an overseas event. This is just not true, it didn't happen. Which is funny because the reports never said the Switch 2 itself was at these events. They actually all agreed that it was target spec hardware that they were playing the demos on. What is target spec hardware? It's a PC spec to similar specs of what they think the final hardware of Switch 2 is going to be and running these demos on it. It's not the Switch 2. It is not a Switch 2 dev kit. In no way did any of the reports ever say that a Switch 2 or a Switch 2 dev kit was at Gamescom and being shown to developers behind closed doors. Now, there were people that maybe twisted these reports into that, but that was never actually in the reports. So he actually denied something that was never reported in the first place. Yeah, we didn't show Switch 2 hardware behind the scenes to developers. Yeah, you didn't. That's not what the report said. They talked about Switch 2 demos. So very, very interesting just the way Furukawa worded all of this. And to me, this only means that we're actually going to get it in 2024, because again, Think about it. He was denying these two specific things, but he didn't deny that there were demos shown. He didn't deny that it was going into mass manufacturing in November. These are also reports that are out there. He didn't deny the dev kits being out at a bunch of developers in the middle of July. There's all these other specific things he never really addresses. He addresses two specific points, uh, one of which is maybe to clear the air on people that were maybe misrepresenting those Gamecom reports. And 
because the original reports never said that there was actually switch twos behind the scene. And then the other one was clarifying that maybe Bobby Kotick's comparing to PS4 power wasn't correct. And that's fine. Like nothing he said here really denies that the platform exists. In fact, he goes on to say in the Q&A section that they are working on new hardware. So look, you can't have it both ways, right? People want to say, look, he's denying the Switch 2 exists. That's not actually what he said. Also, he mentioned they're still working on new hardware, which means, okay, so it's a device they haven't announced. So it's a device they're currently working on, which means they're working on new hardware. He says they're working on new hardware, but now you want to pretend Nintendo isn't working on new hardware. So what is it? Is Furukawa only telling the truth about these couple rumors he's trying to debunk? Or is he you know, just lying that they're working on new hardware. You can't have it both ways. You either take everything he says at face value or you ignore all of it. So in the end, I take these two things when you consider the DLC and the lack of DLC and stuff and the lack of brand new games really heading into 2024, combine that with what Furukawa said where he's even addressing this stuff in the first place, which you're only gonna address this stuff when you're getting closer and closer to unveiling something. It all just kind of leads to, yeah, we're getting a Nintendo Switch 2 in 2024. So the question is, when are they going to reveal it, right? We could talk about when it's going to come out and all this stuff, but honestly, the very first thing they need to do is reveal it. Well, Nate the Hate and MVG did a podcast not too long ago, a handful of days ago, and in the podcast, they were discussing all of Furukawa's words, and they went over all of this exact stuff about how you know, he's not really lying because what he is saying is very specific in how it's worded, where it's not really a lie. The things he's denying are things that make sense to deny as a company. But <laughs> Modern Vintage Gamer really didn't like the way Furukawa went about it. He kind of just thinks that he, they should have just stuck to Nintendo's usual guns of just we don't comment on rumors or just say we're working on new hardware and leave it at that. Um, but whatever. You know what? Everyone's going to have their opinions on what Furukawa said. But what's interesting is one thing that came out of Gamescom, and again, wasn't denied by Furukawa, was this idea of a March date. Now, Nate the Hate had speculated in the past this might be a potential release timing for the system since everyone who saw these Gamescom demos uh, were like, hey, hey, uh, we keep hearing March. We're being told March by Nintendo, but they didn't really indicate what that meant. Well, he now firmly believes, and I tend to agree, that March is when they're going to unveil the system. Now, I can already hear people saying, wait a second, doesn't Nintendo have a brand new, like their only new game that's announced for next year? Isn't that coming in March in Princess Peach Showtime? And you're absolutely right, uh, but how big of a game is Princess Peach Showtime? Like, uh, let's be realistic. Is it as big as Mario Wonder? Well, no, of course not. Um, is it probably more like on the level of a Metroid Dread, maybe even like a Kirby game, you know, not like a big 3D Kirby game, but like, you know, a side-scrolling Kirby game like Star Allies? Probably. It's probably more along there. A game that'll sell two, three million units. And that's going to be considered pretty good because it's, it's probably made by a C team at one of Nintendo studios. Well, here's the thing. The March date could make sense for a number of reasons. Uh, what is very curious when we're thinking about announcing the system in March is if you look at Nintendo's traditional cadence of announcements, there should be a direct in February. They almost always do a Nintendo direct in February. And are they really going to do a Nintendo direct and then announce new hardware a month later? I, I find that to be kind of curious. What I think is probably going to happen is there will be a Nintendo Direct in February. We're going to get release dates for Thousand Year Door. There's going to be some new announcements for a Nintendo Switch, uh, some more ports and remasters, some other smaller games, maybe even a tease of Metroid Prime 4. But I could see this being where we actually get our first tease of the new system, and it happens at the end, where they tease Metroid Prime 4, and then they announce right at the end of the trailer it's going to be a cross generation game for Nintendo Switch and our next Nintendo device. Tune in on blah 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 to hear more about what's in store for Nintendo next. Or something like that. I don't know what the exact phrasing is going to be. What's next for Nintendo? And that's going to be them announcing that March date of when they're going to do a full unveiling of Nintendo Switch 2. I kind of get this feeling that Nintendo's going to do something like that where we're going to get a tease in February and a full blowout in March. Uh, and I, it's not even going to be like a 2016 type of tease for Switch where they gave us a full trailer on the system. I think it's just going to be like mentioning the system exists. They'll mention a cross-generation title, so it's still a Nintendo Switch announcement. 
But then they'll tease when they're going to announce that new hardware. And I just kind of think that this makes sense. And this is what Nintendo is going to do. But if you want me to, like, you know, stick a fork in it and go, tell me when they're unveiling the system. Look, I'm just going to say March. The, 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 the February Direct thing is me just guessing. March is something we've actually heard from supposed developers that saw the demos. So I'm just going to go with March. March seems like a good reveal. As for when they're going to release after that, it's anyone's guess. Could be, you know, really quickly. Like, they can do a March, April, May, June. Do, like, a, a June launch. Uh, could be August. Could be September. Could even be November. Who knows? The point is that I think March is when we're going to see it. So, yeah, three months in the next year, right before the end of Nintendo's fiscal year. Get the investors super excited for what's coming next. Get people wanting to buy a ton of stock. Getting ready for the next big wave of Nintendo hardware. Now, that's just my take. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. Feels great to be back on camera. We'll catch you guys in the next video.